Derwood Zalki is a climate specialist and joins us from Santa Barbara in California. Derwood, thank you for your time. Uh, does this report and warning from the UN come as a real surprise considering uh, what we see happen in the climate? It is not a surprise, but it does confirm that we are in deep trouble. We've known this for many years because climate impacts that we see out the window. We see flooding our streets. We see the wildfires burning down our forest. We see the melting of the ice. We see the dying of the corals. These are signs that we should be uh, following, we should be awakening to, and we should become more motivated to slow down warming. The UN report confirms all of this in a very elegant report, one of a series of issues every year before the climate negotiations to tell the world that we are still failing. Now, there is some bright spot uh, left there is a possibility that we can slow down warming in the near term, where we also slow down warming in the long term. The near term means we have to cut the super climate pollutant methane. It's one of the short-lived climate pollutants, along with the hydrofluorocarbon refrigerants, black carbon soot, and tropospheric or ground level ozone. If we cut those super pollutants, we can cut the rate of warming in half, and we can cut the rate of Arctic warming, particularly important, by two-thirds. And we can do it in the next decade or two. And that will give us the extra time to wrestle carbon dioxide, the main climate pollutant, into some accommodation where we are approaching net zero at the mm -hmm. middle of the century. Uh, Derwood, this is a big if, of course, and it needs to happen, as you say, within the next 10 years. And there have been so many warnings, so many pledges from countries to cut uh, those greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, do you believe that they will be implemented or even followed? We have to move beyond promises, which are rarely kept, if you look back and see in history how many times the, the countries and the companies that have made promises to cut climate emissions have failed to meet those promises. We need to move to mandatory climate mitigation, for example, with methane. And we need to use the Montreal Protocol, the treaty that has put the stratospheric ozone on the path to recovery by the middle of the century, and at the same time, that treaty has avoided as much warming as carbon dioxide or CO2 is causing today. We have one example that should inspire us now to move to a similar mandatory treaty to cut methane, the other super climate pollutants, while we continue to reduce carbon dioxide by shifting to clean energy as fast as we possibly can. Do you think something like mandatory treaty that you speak of will be brought up at the COP29 summit that's set to take place in Azerbaijan just next month? That will surely be just one of many issues that need to be discussed very urgently. The World Bank had its annual meeting last week in Washington, D.C., and Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley, brought up in several of her meetings the importance of a mandatory methane treaty. And I would expect that uh, the prime minister will continue that call for a mandatory agreement when she um, goes to Baku for the next uh, round of the climate negotiations. Uh, the question is, how many people will listen, wake up, and act in the limited time we have left? I think more and more people are beginning to see that she's right and that uh, we need to move with urgency to cut methane and the other super pollutants today. Listen, wake up and act. And that's a very important message ahead of that COP29 summit. Derwood Zalki, appreciate you uh, speaking to us and breaking that all down for us live there from Santa Barbara in California. My pleasure.